Okay, let's look at some free body diagram exercises. So here we have the real, real life, real life scenario. Where we have some kind of member, some structure, and they are it's interacting with other bodies. These bodies are applying forces to this member that we're interested in. And here we have an incomplete free body diagram, so we need to um, we need to now complete the free body diagram. So my my suggestion to you is please, 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 please go through all of these. I'll show them to you on the screen here. Go through all of them, okay? And pause the video and see if you can do this yourself, right? See if you can complete the free body diagram and then come back. You will learn so much more if you try to do it on your own. Okay, so pause now. Great, I'm glad you paused it. So here we have this uh, bell crank. There's a cable attachment there, flexible cable. There's a mass over there, some box or something that's being applied there. And there's a pin support. Okay, so you can see we replace that with a force. The tension in the cable is always it's always in that direction, right? Okay, so um, a cable can't you you can't in real life you probably can, but for 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 our assumption you can't apply a force in that direction. You can't push on the cable there, and the cable transmits a force to this object. The cable can only apply a tension. Okay, right. So it's always in that direction. Then you've got um, the mass of this object being applied down like that. And then what's happening here? You need to put in, let's go thinner, a Y and a X. Now, just one point over here is that uh, in, this, in, in this case here, you can actually put in your AY and AX in any direction. You can put AY down. AX to the left. It doesn't matter because when you eventually use your sum of the forces in the X equals zero, sum of the forces in the Y equals zero. If you put in AY and you put it up, right, you say, let's, let's for example say AY minus MG equals zero, for example. Okay, say, say now that's horizontal. Right, for all practical purposes, just practical purposes. The only forces that are acting on this body are the AY force and the MG force. Well, let's put it this way. Let's change it. Say now I put it down. AY down. Okay. And now, now I say minus AY because I've chosen up as positive. Minus AY minus MG equals zero. So I've got, then I've got AY is then equal to my, um, minus mg, okay? Because that goes across, that becomes plus, and then I remove the minus. So what I've basically, because I get this minus sign there, it means that I've chosen the wrong direction. I get the correct magnitude, but I've chosen the wrong direction. So it's not that crucial to put it in the right direction. Later on, there is an example when we're dealing with friction where we need to, but in general, you you can just put it either down. In this case, you can see, well, it has to be up, right? If there's just one force down and there's one force and then there's another vertical force, for there to be equilibrium, some of the forces in the Y equals zero, this force has to balance that force. It has to cancel it out, okay? So you can't have equilibrium if you've got two forces pushing the thing down. All right, I think that makes sense. Okay, what about this control lever applying a torque to the shaft at O? Okay, so you apply this, apply a force there, and it needs to cause a torque about this point. There's a there's a shaft um, going through O, right? So this is the incomplete free body diagram. We've got the P there, and this is a kind of a pin connection. Actually, it is a it is it is a pin connection. But you also need to include uh, a rotation 
right, resistance, a moment there. Okay? Because if there was no resistance, then this would just swing like this without applying any torque over there. So, so there has to be this resistive torque, this support moment there. Okay. A boom OA, right? As you can see, there's many interacting objects, but we're only, in this case, we're only interested in this guy. Okay? So there's this downward gravitational force. There's the tension in this cable. Okay? And over here, we have a, a hinge. Okay? Hinge that O. So this point over here resists motion in the horizontal and vertical. So you would put in an OY and an OX there. Okay, here we have a uniform crate. What is uniform? It just means that the mass is evenly distributed, right, through the box. A uniform crate. It means that we don't have like a, 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 a concentration of mass over here a density high over here and then low over here. The density is evenly distributed. Okay, but here we have a smooth contact surface and here we've got a rough contact surface. So the smooth contact surface, yes, is replaced just by a normal force. And we need to take into account gravity, okay, acting through the center of mass, although they don't mention it here. And then we've got a rough surface. So yes, you've got a vertical force and you need to include bx or yeah so this would be by or normal and anyway you need to include those two forces okay a loaded bracket supported by a pin connected at a by a, a fixed pin and in a smooth slot sorry supported by a pin connection at a sometimes this is the first time i'm reading this Okay, supported by a pin connection at A and a smooth slot at B. Okay, so this is a pin connection. What do we do then? We replace that with a Y and a X. And this is correct because the only force that or support or reaction that this, this object B can apply to this bracket is to resist its motion in that direction. It can't resist its motion in that direction. Of course, unless it gets to one of the ends. But if we're talking about small motion, it can't resist that. So this is correct. Okay. All right. We'll look at this one in the next. Where it's not only incomplete, but it's wrong.